So we started the series Guitar Shopping in Ireland two years ago. And the beauty about guitar shops is that the stock is always changing, which means we're back for another episode in Everest Music, my local guitar shop, to take a look at what they've got. But this time there's one other change. We've got a co-host. Welcome back to my channel. Like and subscribe. We're here with Ryan, and uh, could you show something cool? Just something that stands off the wall. There's obviously a lot of guitars here. Can mm -hmm. you just pick out something that's cool? Personally, I actually quite like the Hendick. I think that's how it's pronounced. I hope I'm not offending people with that. This guy. Charvel. Yeah. So, <clears throat> kind of has like the same finish as the Eddie Van Halen guitars, as far as like satin hand rope finish. Uh, relic, all that kind of stuff. Floyd Rose. Uh, but I, what I like about this is that the controls are out of the way, but the pickup selector is actually just a push-push. Oh, okay. So it's like set it, forget it kind of thing. Mm. So kind of love it for that. Also, as kind of a tech, I just love the fact that it has a spoke truss rod adjustment. So it's a lot easier to get in there and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's vibey and kind of dig the thinner necks on the Charvels myself oh. as far as stuff goes. So yeah. Great. Well, let's give it a go. So what are your thoughts? <laughs> um, is the uh, is the guy looking? Can we run out with it? <laughs> Those are my thoughts. I would buy that in a heartbeat. The um, only problem is it's a strap. Yeah, you're not a strap guy, but I like it. It's very. He, he's right about it being very Eddie Van Halen. Uh, Even though I never said that. No, he said it. Oh, he said it. Yeah, it's uh, lovely to play. Like the neck is gorgeous. Yeah, I'm quite the fan. You're a sir dealer, right? Yes. Yeah, the only one in the country, as far as I'm aware of. Um, yeah, been doing them the last year and a half, I believe. Mark, about a year and a half or so now. God, yeah, it's getting to that point already. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, exceptional guitars built out in California. Wait, which is your favourite, sir? I'm a sucker at the moment for, being perfectly honest, just the black strap. The black strap, a classic. Yeah. That's the one I usually go for, as far as stuff goes. So, it's classic S, so just standard S style guitar. Um, <clears throat> but it's also antique, so it does have a bit of relic oh, check in it. It's got the nitro. Yeah, uh, lovely finish, and yeah, all around nice guitar.
are your thoughts? <clears throat> yes, I like this one as well. Um, and you're not a scrap man. How do you pronounce it? Sir. Like, where are any of those letters? <laughs> I can just see the S. <laughs> S-U-H-R. Oh, that Sir. makes sense. Yeah. I thought that said suz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a suz. <laughs> See, that's when, that's when you can't really trust it, so the sir is a bit sus. <laughs> like and subscribe. I'm the dyslexic one. <laughs> right, next guitar. Okay. <laughs> So, Mark, we've really just played like Strat esque type guitars okay. so far. Could you maybe something a little bit different, a little bit wacky, perhaps? Okay. A lot of what we have is is along the the kind of Strat Telly vaguely Gibson esque line. I'm the, noticing you do have some some pointies. We have one or two pointies. We like to try and fill in the the, the, the pointy market. We you know we, we like to try and represent a little bit of that. The Irish guitar market's very conservative, we find at least. I'm sure there's there's niche followings for everything everywhere, but uh, a, a lot of what seems to, to, to move easily at least is fairly traditional stuff. Having said that, um, pointiness, a couple Jacksons, a couple Rhodes, one is X series, one's Pro series. I can never remember which is which, but it's all, you know, the, like the, the Comfort Heel. This one's the full on, I think it's the ORT5 with the kind of classic Rhodes finish, whereas that one's, you know, vaguely Rhodes-esque in its shape, but it's a little bit more different with camo and all the Floyd and everything like that. And um, this one's quite nice. I think I kind of prefer that one with actives. I'm generally not a big fan of active pickups myself, but that one kind of bites. Um, but that one undeniably has the Rhodes vibe, if that's what you're after. Let's, let's try your Give it a go, give it a go. Um, we do also have the Ormsby's. I know you're a big fan of the Ormsby's. Um, we have a few of these guys left. Um, we have nothing on order, I think, at the moment, but we're looking into that, I think, a bit further. Give this one a go. This one will be a bit different than what you've been looking at so far. Yeah, give it a go. Great. Give it a bash. I'll Thank you. For a bit. Thanks. See you in a bit. Thank you. So the perfect uh, Beatles. Nobody has ever played that. <laughs> no, no, no one's ever played that on that. Um, yeah, what, what do you think of the Beatles riff? I, I mean, it was interesting uh, visually yeah. and, and audibly. Um, what do you think? Because I know this isn't your thing. It's not even close to your thing. What, what do you feel? Uh, I know I said this a lot now. The neck is nice. It's a bit kind of. I prefer the other necks, but. It's a bit shreddy. It's a shreddy neck. You're used to a little bit of a thicker... Shreddy neck. He played in Steel Panther. Like when you're sitting down like we are, if you are used to being in this position. Yeah. Which I hate when people sit with ease like that. This is how you have to... No, I mean like how you would... would oh. Been. Well, yeah, you can't. because you. Well, I've seen people doing it. <laughs> please, please make that the thumbnail for this video. <laughs> that, that really looks like something I do. <laughs> okay, so we played the Jackson. Cool. What's next? Well, what, what else have you played so far? Fill me in. You were dealing with my, my colleague Ryan. We played the cool Super Strat. Keenan, you're going to have to help me. Um, <laughs> yeah, Scooby yeah. Scrappy Doo, Scooby Doo. <laughs> uh, we played the Sir, we played the Black Sir Strap, okay. and we played the Charvel Relic. Lovely Heinrich, yeah. Yes, uh, that's all that we played so far. Great. And then the Rhodes. Okay. So I was saying to him here that I think we should play something like off the wall. Off the wall? Well, actually, we're playing everything off the wall. 
But um, <laughs> there's there's two ways that we can go off the wall. Um, we can we can either go like traditional body shapes with interesting specs, different pickups. Okay. Or we have some like really off the wall. We have some secondhand stuff I can kind of run you through. This stuff is always kind of like subject to change. It's always turning over. Some stuff might be here for a while, but generally it turns over fairly quick. Um, that one seems to be your guys' kind of vibe. Kill switch, you know, kind of like single, you know, a single humbuck or single, single kind of vibe. Again, with the Charvel has that real fast neck on it. Okay. Um, that might suit. That one's quite nice. That's a Japanese Tokai with a Demarzio rail in the bridge. That's quite a hot one, but it's very kind of like vintage feeling. Um, that one just came in. On trade in, that's quite nice. Just a paranormal uh, squire. This one that I quite like, um, with the whole sort of like switchable pickup system. Um, Why don't we go with that one? Yeah, crazy tuners on that one. I quite like the tuners on this. Lovely heel carve, all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit different. It's still kind of like vaguely, eh, you know, single cutty, but a little bit weird proportions. Uh, that is quite nice actually as well. That's a '91, I think, ESP Japanese made. Um, Here's the weirdest thing we have. That is strange. What do you think? Weird? Uh, we have a Chinese Fano. That's quite nice. That's cool. We have a seven string Squire Strap. Nice. How weird are you talking? Uh, uh, I like what's in your hand right now. Yeah, yeah. Does that balance the weirdness? I think it, that balances it, the weirdness. This, I think, plays quite nice as well, in fairness to it, outside of all the kind of specs. I think it rips. Give it cool. a go. Cool. Let's go for it. Twiddle all the switches. We will twiddle all the switches. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Tuners match the inlay. Do they? Yeah. yeah. Look. So the inlay. Look at the inlay. Mm -hmm. Right. Now look at the top of the tuners. Oh wow. That's a very cool detail. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I just meant like the the metal that it is. That's really cool. Are we doing some kind of ranking of like what we've played or are we just... I don't know, we're just talking like guitar um, per guitar. We can't really compare because they're all so different. Especially this, like this is a very different one. We sought out a different guitar. Okay, I think that's... Okay, you said we're not ranking, but I think it's my third favourite that we've played today. Um, this is lovely. Like I'd have no problem playing a gig with this. Uh, Weight-wise, I know you said that it's heavier than expected, but I actually think it's a nice weight. Can you just turn it on side though? Yeah. It's Pancake Buddy. Oh, nice. It's got an ash top and like a mahogany back, maybe something. That is cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm quite the fan, and as you pointed out, you're gonna keep that in the video, yeah? About the, the tuning, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm quite a fan of it. I could play this all day. There's some little details that make it kind of cool. Again, I know this is a running team now, but the neck is lovely. I'm waiting for you to go, oh, I hate the neck. The neck's not lovely. I'm just noticing now that they're P90s. Well, no, they're not. They're P90s, but there's a bar magnet, so I don't actually know what the electronics do. So there's a bar magnet there, bar magnet there. This might be a Humbucker 90, some some yeah. kind of thing, and like that's what the switches humble. are. I don't know what exactly they do. The bridge is cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of details on this that are interesting. <laughs> so, Ryan. You don't just sell finished guitars here. No. 
You also sell kits. Yes. And you're holding a finished kit, I suppose? Yep. You you put this together? Yeah. Yeah, it was a case of, like, over lockdown, I wanted to build, uh, actually before lockdown, um, wanted to put together a Les Paul-style kit. And in between getting this, one of my friends passed away, so I kind of dedicated it to him. Um, so it's just standard Les Paul kit, as far as stuff goes, bolt on neck. Um, but some of the things I've done to it was I didn't really like the neck angle and it was the fact that I was putting a normal tunematic on it led me to do the neck angle that I've recessed the bridge into the body um, knock off big speed trim um, stacked pots so you're still getting your volume tone control and all that kind of stuff um, three pickups um, but this is a freeway switch so it's kind of like one, two, three then you flip it over and you get another tree so it has like six pickup options on it, uh, fret leveled and shallower tuners as well on it, uh, and then bone null. And yeah, it's one of the DIY kits we sell here, as far as stuff goes. And yeah, they're surprisingly good kits for the money. I think like this one is only 130 ish so it's like not bad money. <laughs> Okay, Mark, we played a, a, a wacky one. Mad. Let's see something more tame, but a little bit different. Cool. So, yeah, you, you're thinking like traditional aesthetics, but maybe a bit more capable than the boomer aesthetics might suggest? Perhaps, yeah. Now, we have lots of that. Uh, let me see. I'll have to keep drilling the sort of, you know, kind of like a, a target there. Because they, they do have an awful lot. This is probably one of the most capable ones that we have particularly for your style of playing at least. Yeah, it has the whole kind of relic finish. It's not for everybody. I kind of like it. Um, but the Aldrich, or the Aldrich pickups that it has in this, super hot. A little bit hotter than I like, um, but it really, really like hits the front of the amp nice and hard. Mm -hmm. um, big, huge neck on it, chunky. It has a kind of V profile. This is the um, Ian Thornley at a big wreck signature. Um, so a, this is a, a, an exceptional guitar. Outside of all of the, the vaguely kind of strati telly things, um, this is savage. That might be worth trying. Out of all of them, that one has the Thornbucker set in it, which is really, really nice. Has a real nice bite to it. That one we got in as a trade in recently. I really like this one. Um, I can't remember what pickups are in it. I still need to check. Lovely neck on it. Might be worth going. That's a bit similar maybe to the one you already tried. Okay. Well, out of out of all of these, because you've got like a full wall of sir. <laughs> so many. What's your favorite? Hmm. Give us your favorite one. It'd have to be the Asado, I think, to be honest. Okay, yeah. well, let's do that. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a little bit more traditional, but the performance out of it is crazy. You know, the the price certainly warrants it, but uh, it yeah, it, it does well, in fairness. Let's give it a go. Glenn, we're finally going to get to play a telly. Woo! It's a nice one, too. It's, it's one of the best ones I've ever encountered, let's be real. Mm. Cool. Okay, great, we'll give, give it a it go. go. Thank you. 
you're not ready for that, but your kids are gonna love it. <laughs> okay, so is, is that a, is that a is that a uh, one that you like? Yes. This is gonna sound so stupid. I think the neck feels nice. No, that that was gonna, that was gonna say that after. Um, no, I think the neck feels nice. No, just, just uh, it reminds you of a of a Les Paul custom. Like I mean, oh, vision. visually, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can see the the black with the the gold. With the gold. The, the binding. It looks classy. It looks gorgeous. It looks like I might want to buy a drink first, to be honest. Uh, I just noticed I'm on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Suki Nix is on the back. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, I think the neck is nice. Uh, play zombie. <laughs> So we've just played a telly, yeah. and there so, are some other tellys that we could play, yeah, and we will play. Yeah, I, I, I didn't give you what you just asked for, because I just had to show you that one. That's, that's exceptional in our shop. As far as what we just talked about in reality, the two that come to my mind with like the, the kind of traditional aesthetics, but with like modern spec, would probably be these freckings we just got back in, we usually keep a few of those in. We really like these, the, the Country Squire semitones, I think they are. Um, hollow body tellies, double bound, you kind of can't go wrong. But with the, the humbucker single mini, you know, with like the stack knobs oh, and everything. mini humbucker? Yeah, the whole lot. It, it, and they play real nice. They have real nice fret work on these freckings. I really like. We don't always have them in, we just got them back in. Another one that I really like is this guy. You played, I think, one of the Japanese backuses last time. This is one of their Indonesian range, but it all goes through their Japanese plant. That's the great thing about the Bacchus stuff. Um, so this guy, at the price that it's at, it's not cheap necessarily, um, but it's a like roasted bit of flame maple in the neck. Lovely, nice, you know, kind of narrow, deep neck profile. Locking tuners, Wilkinson trim, their own humbucker stainless frets, which I really like at this price point. The whole kind of, you know, the, the, the heel end adjustment for the truss rod. Um, fairly standard wiring, except it does split the humbuckers down. I really quite like this one. So I think, yeah, that kind of fits the bill for... The old school style ish with uh, with kind of more performance spec. Take your pick. Yeah. Uh yeah. let's do fracking because the uh, the mini humbucker is speaking to me. Yeah, you don't see many of those. <laughs> I like I like this mini humbucker. Okay. In the neck. Yeah, it's, we'll it's sounded nice. Oh. No. Uh, I like the placement of this. It sustains loads. Yeah. Like you can hold it out for ages. Whoa, what's that for? That's your push Stacked, pull. I think it's uh no. I think it's um like an EQ thing, so that's probably like trap uh, tone for, for this pickup tone for that pickup, I think. Maybe. Ooh. Something like that. It's a stacked anyway. Um yeah, I like the position of that. I like the... I think it looks cool. I like the F-hole. And I love the fact that it has the front and back binding. That's really cool. And there's no belly cut or belly curve, whatever it's called. Do you like the neck, Glenn? I like the neck. We have to keep the consistency. It's a bit James Tyler. Although I do actually kind of like the... Um, see this, this, this devil? Oh, yeah. That's nice. I don't like the locking tuners. 
Why? Because they're too fucking generally. Like... I don't like that car. It's too... Too car-y. Exactly. Let's see. Someone that gets my point. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. I get it. Sure. Um, no, he's right about the frets. They're nice. Yeah, the frets are nice. Although you'd hope that the frets would be good on a fret king. <laughs> They're fret king amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the nicest neck of play. Oh, on the neck scale. Yeah. Okay. And it's not like look at the price for, for, for the nicest neck you've played. Oh, just half a kidney. Oh. Six six nine nine is significantly uh, cheaper than some of the guitars that you've played, and this is the nicest neck I think. So you guys are also your sir dealer. Yeah. You're a Multiple uh, sire dealer. Yeah, main sire dealer, main sir dealer. We do a bunch of Fender stuff. You know, we we, we do Gretsch, we we do fracking, we do this You're Bacchus right. brand that that I quite like. Um, these guys though, Ormsby's. Oh, okay. One of the few places that are doing Ormsby's, um, which which we really really like. They're 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 absolutely mad. For the people who are bored of all the kind of the standard stuff, the Ormsby's are are really kind of killing it for that stuff. I I quite like the uh, the Wang Gang stuff. I'm a sucker for that. That whole vibe. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of my speed. Oh, that's a uh, like a kind of yeah. a chameleon esque finish. <laughs> um, like, I, I, yeah, I'm a sucker for those kind of different neck woods. Like we have we have an American Pro Two Strat there with a rosewood neck. I'm really partial to as well. So I really like that the Ormsby do that whole vibe. Um, this one is probably our most popular one as far as the one that catches people's eye. I can't tell why. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a pretty standard finish, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boomer spec. <laughs> You'd see this on like a 50, 58 yeah. type, type of strat, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> Let's play this one. Give it a go. Thank you. Man, I like the neck on this one. Fun tells me how to I liked how uh, lead wise, I, I really liked it. I was surprised that, like, how I really liked it at the end there. Uh, obviously, that's a fan for a thing. Oh, so you're a fan? I'm, I'm a friend. I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. Of, yeah, I guess I am a fan of how it is when you're playing leads, but I don't know for, like, rhythm and stuff like that. I find that they're a lot, like, clearer, maybe, for rhythms. Like, you can hear everything. There's no hiding behind anything. It's just kind of yeah. It's all there. That's yeah, they're very favorite. clean sounding pickups, like in a clear sounding. Clear pickups. sounding pickups. Not clean per se. Is like, it one of those? It is. Oh, it is. Nice. I like the color. Is it similar at all to yours? Same scale length. Okay. So because it's uh, so the E string is the same scale as a Strat. Okay. And then it, the strings get progressively longer. So that's 25.5 inches from there to there. No. And then from there to there on the low E, it's 27 and a half inches. Okay. So it's a full, what, two, two inch difference. That's locking tuners as well. Yeah. Oh, oh those are very locking tunery. They are. And you've got a, a bottle opener as well. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, they sell them um, key rings that are that headstock for those bottle openers. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I am a fan of this, surprisingly. Okay, after this we'll bring you to the doctors, get you checked. Uh, Please do. That's very un -Glen of you. Okay. Um. Oh. We might have to do that. <laughs> well, sure. That wasn't there when we came out. It wasn't. Okay, Mark. We just noticed a guitar on the wall. It stood out instantly. A little bit. And, uh... It actually belongs to you. Me, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm selling it through the shop. I have a couple of guitars that, that I'm always trying to do. The owners graciously allow me to do one or two every so often. You know, give a little kickback to, to, to these guys to you know for the honor, I suppose. Um, 
That 1969 Melody Maker is mine and the white 75 is mine. The red 79 is the shops. So if someone's looking for, for a couple of vintage guitars, um, that's definitely a good way to go. Um, this one is quite cool. I quite like this. I bought this just before COVID. It needed a little bit of work, um, which is what I do here. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's as far as I can tell all original bar. I'm dubious of just the arm because the, the, most of the hardware on this is chrome and chrome pits, whereas this has that kind of like aged nickel feel, which feels to me like it's aftermarket aged. But as far as I can tell, everything else is original. I've looked inside the pots and everything seem original. That's fairly original looking to me. It's not particularly, you know, aftermarket looking. Um, but yeah, all the hardware seems original. The pickups, the switch, everything. The tuners seem original. Um, but I did refret it and a new bone nut. Um, and it, it, in fairness, it is a little ripper. It's, it's savage. It has a little bit of a telly vibe with just a little bit of a different, you know, just because it's all mahogany and it doesn't have the base plates and stuff that a telly would. Um, but it does have a little bit of a kind of telly bite to it um, with, with something else to it. I don't know what it is. But uh, I, yeah, I've always liked these. Um, there's something about them. It's the fact that I had like an SG special 15 years ago and I quite liked it. And um, so all that long ago as these things go, I suppose. But I generally kind of prefer single coils. So I always went, oh, single coil SG, nice. Mm -hmm. And ended up getting one um, just before lockdown. But uh, yeah, just and decided to What year on. is this? 69. Okay. It's like all the different kind of years have different specs. Like pre-65, you get the kind of like the Joan Jett style with the double cutaway kind of Les Paul style. Like earlier than that, you get the like the single cut Les Paul style, like almost like a junior, but with a single coil pickup yeah. in it. And then you get into like 67 and stuff is where you start to see like Pelham Blue versions of these. And 69 is where you get the walnut, 68, 69. And I think later then you start to get the big headstock like you do, but without the faceplate. And so there's loads of different kind of specs and stuff. So this is very kind of indicative of 69. Um, as the uh, as the, the serial number kind of verified, I quite like this. But it's just a matter of um, it just has a has a bit of value to it, and you know I could do with the cash more than the guitar at this moment. If more guitars than I should, as we all do, we all have that affliction, I suppose. And yeah, the, the likes of the vintage stuff, I, I like to kind of turn over. I like to kind of get myself some basket cases, fix them up, and turn them over a little bit myself every so often. And this is now, so yeah, give that a go and see how it feels. Great, thank you. I don't think I need to ask, but I'm going to ask anyway. What are your thoughts on the 69 SG Melody Maker? I don't have one bad... Uh, yeah, I do have one bad thing to say about it. It's not mine. <laughs> that's that's the only problem I have with this guitar. Uh, this is something that you'd find in, like, Norm's rare guitars or something. Yeah, it's... Oh, this is beautiful. Do you know what? Maybe it's good that I don't own this, because I feel like I'd never take it out. Would you be afraid? Yeah, I would. It's too nice. I'd love to know what you think of it, but I think like, okay, again, the neck, haha, ha, is lovely. I think this is the nicest neck I've played. Okay. Yeah. And then the next one will be the nicest neck you played, and then the next one will be the nicest neck you played. Uh, yeah, the headstock, the body, the weight again. Everything is a yes. It's a yes. You've got the X factor. <laughs> Yeah, so what, what I'd do is um, put a couple of EMGs in there, maybe write this for a Floyd Rose, uh, scallop the full neck, um, uh, locking nut, of course, uh, locking tuners, okay. uh, maybe paint it neon green, and yeah. then we might have something. Yeah, but see, it's very hard to do that when you're in prison for, like, that. that that's a crime. <laughs> Can I get a picture with it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a picture with Mickey Mouse? <laughs> Follow Glenn on Instagram at, what's the app, Glenn? What, what? Uh, Glenn Walker official, as opposed to, uh, you know, the other guy that keeps... Oh, the unofficial, that guy. Oh, yeah. I hate that guy. All right, Glenn, you have to say goodbye. You have to say goodbye. You have to say goodbye. It's so lovely. It's bedtime. It's really good. <laughs> you can play it tomorrow. Okay, next up is... Fender. Nice. <laughs> Little known brand. You may not have heard of it. 
No, uh, never. We do quite well with it. Um, it. It's quite a large range of Fender we do because you, you kind of can't go wrong with, with a Fender. It's, it, it just covers all the ground. Like, you know, they really kind of nailed it pretty early on. As much as people try and step aside of that, I think there's some great stuff happening. It, it still just works. So, I mean, you know, I've been leaning towards tellies a lot recently. I've always been a strat man. Um, but having kind of ticked that box myself and that, you know, I have a couple strats, I'm like, nice, donezo. I've really been enjoying tellies. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the likes of like, we have all this sort of range, you know, the, the, starting out with just the Mexican Player Series stuff. We have a couple of interesting colors in the Player Series as well. They were kind of limited runs um, up through the likes of the Performers. We have one quite nice, actually, um, Professional 2, which I mentioned earlier, this guy. I'm a sucker for Rosewood necks. Oh, that's lovely. That I really like. There's something about the texture of it. I'm a sucker for it. I've, I have a PRS McCarty at home with a full Rosewood neck, so I'm kind of, I'm already kind of a sucker for that sort of stuff. So just a question of the price then. Yes. Does that get lower than the faster you run? 100%. <laughs> but you have to run faster than me. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, I prefer to live. Thank you. I'm not very fast, but I'm very aerodynamic. <laughs> Um, yeah, that neck is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It, it, it is. It, it is something special there. Um, you get up into the likes of the American uh, Vintage 2s. Um, beautiful spec and all like nitro finish and stuff. They have a lovely feel to them. Um, and you kind of can't, can't go wrong with a bit of Lake Placid Blue. That's a particularly nice telly though. Um, it has a real bite to it. Um, some oddball stuff that we have as well, I suppose. I quite like the, the Japanese um, JV Mod range. Sorry. I don't know where <laughs> I don't know where I'm going either. <laughs> This guy I really like, I don't know why. I usually don't get on with them um, 50s spec uh, maple necks. I'm more of a rosewood fretboard, even if it isn't a rosewood neck. Um, but that one's a really nice, um, a kind of an interesting mix of, of vintage and modern specs. The, uh, the Japanese plant really does well with that. Nice. There's just a straight player series, but with gold hardware, it's quite tasty. Oh, nice. Um, and then this is probably my favorite at the moment. That one's nice. This one's cool, it's the Paisley. We always try and keep one of these in whenever we can, because it weighs, Nothing. Yeah. Um, it's savage. I just had a mini heart attack when you did. I that. know. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. Um, the magic of this is, yes, it looks like an Esquire. Yes, it does have a neck pickup. Oh, okay. People always ask, what does the switch do on a pickup? And then I have to tell them. Normally, it does this, blah, 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 um, but it does have a neck pickup. It has a little stealthy neck pickup. You can okay. kind of see it through the the pickguard. It's a little bit weird. Um, okay. Just to just to give it that kind of vibe. Um, lovely big chunky neck. If you're looking for that kind of vintage spec, uh, but its main party trick is the fact that the bodywood is Paulonia, if memory serves, with a spruce top. It's a really weird spec, but it really does weigh nothing. 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 Yeah, that's crazy. And has a real snappy bite to it. Not okay. a huge amount of sustain um, as a result, but a real snappy bite. So yeah, definitely be worth giving that a go and see how you get on. Let's try it out. I like an acoustic that sounds. It weighs absolutely nothing. To the viewer, I'm trying to convey the weight. Um, nothing. Like how do I how do I showcase that it weighs nothing? This, perhaps? <laughs> does does the, would you be able to do that with a Les Paul? Probably not. <laughs> so that's <laughs> there, there. there you go. <laughs> That's how much it weighs. Nothing. I was very surprised at just like, I wasn't expecting to be able to, I was expecting to go to the neck pickup and like, in volume. 
Okay. But it didn't, because like, look how low it is, it's under the pickguard. So... Can you see the, the neck pickup? Um... He said you can't. I, I can't. Yeah, I was trying as well. I mean, the pickguard is kind of clear with a pattern, so maybe if you get it at the right angle, but I can't with my eyes. Um, but yeah, this is cool. This is made in Mexico. Um, it's got a bit of a relic. Uh, it's a light relic, so you've got aging here. Glenn, hold this and just uh, just tell me that you like the neck. You know? <laughs> uh, I like the neck. Oh, there you go. Oh, the finish checking's cool, actually. I didn't notice that before. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can. No, you can't. That is, uh, I'm I'm a fan of this. Yeah, I'm much more a fan than I thought I would be. And it, it's an interesting topic because this is Polonia wood. So the top is spruce, but the body is Polonia. Okay. Polonia is technically, um, it's like the fastest growing wood. Okay. There is. Like it just shoots up. So you can get a tree, like a full grown tree, 10 years versus let's say like a light wood that Fender would use would be ash mm -hmm. which has got prob two problems one takes a long time two ash there's a disease like a fungal disease that kind of kills off the trees yeah. um so in Ireland say they say that like in the next 20 years we're not really going to have ash trees because they're all dying so if you're a guitar manufacturer and you need to make guitars out of wood uh that's a problem so this Polonia is a as a alternative i think for the uh the lightweight guitars and uh this is proof of it it's it's so light like you yeah. don't have back problems no not at all mr les paul over here terrible kids these days back in my day all right let's go uh what, what are your thoughts like thoughts on the guitar or are you still like in love with that sg oh i'll always be in love with the sg <laughs> okay mark so we've played a lot of what's in store. Well, not a lot. You've got like hundreds of well, guitars. We could do this all day. Yeah, yeah. But we, we could do this for several days. Mm -hmm. But we've played a, a good selection. However, something that's kind of been in the back of my mind as we've gone through is you showed us some secondhand guitars yes. a little bit earlier. Yep. And you've just got some cool stuff. Nice uh, stuff yeah. One of the things is the, the seven string Squire Strat. Yeah, that's been Haven't good. seen one of those before. No. And also something that I've definitely never seen before is... That's a weird one, I right? One of these. Uh, a reissue of yeah, a 60s... Yeah, 90s reissue of a 60s weird model that uh, the Yamaha did. I don't know a huge amount about it, to be honest. Um, it's just weird. Glenn, sounds like you're up. Hey. <laughs> Seven string, cool. All Thank right. you. I mean, it sounds to me like the perfect rig. Dual guitar stuff? Dual guitar stuff? Yeah, dual guitar stuff, yeah. One, two, three...
Okay, what are your thoughts on the seven? This was fun to play, because I don't play seven strings. Um, fun to play, yeah. I'm very surprised to see this. What? Very surprised. That it's still intact and I haven't dropped it? <laughs> no, that it's a seven string strap. Is that not a thing like, that you would see? Okay, viewers, a little bit of history on the seven string strap. There was a guy called Alex Gregory. He also goes by Maestro Alex Gregory. He designed the seven string strat. Now, there's a big debate. He claims that he designed seven string outright, uh, but it's been like a thing in Russian music for like centuries, so didn't. Um, but seven string strat, and he got the patent, he patented it, and he got Fender to make it, and so the seven string strat, if you look in, on the market today, you'll find seven strings from a lot of different brands. You can get the newer brands, but like if you look at the older brands, you'll even get Gibson seven strings. They made Explorers and Les Pauls, I believe, in seven string formats. They also, uh, so like you've got brands like Charvel and Jackson and BC Rich. Those are older brands, not as old obviously, but older brands that are making seven strings. Seven strings are popular. You will not find a seven string Fender Strat, which is strange because you'd think that you'd see that. like. ESP are making essentially seven string strats as well, uh, as are many other brands. Uh, and you can say that Charvel and Jackson are under the Fender umbrella, yes, but they don't have Fender on the headstock, so it's not a Fender strat. Uh, the point being is that Alex Gregory had the patent, and therefore, I, I think it's it's out, it's it's gone now, it's um, out of date, or it's, it's run out, I checked a while ago. But Fender have still not made a Fender 7-string Strat that hasn't been an Alex Gregory Fender 7-string signature Strat. They're very rare, so it's very unusual to find a Squire, like with Stratocaster, written on the headstock, 7-string. Uh, I know they did make them for a time, um, but yeah, it's very unusual to see, very rare to see. Very cool. Do you like the neck? I like the neck. I like the uh, neck. It's a bit baseball buddy. It's a bit wide. Yeah. It's not thick, but it's wide. Exactly, yeah. This one is a bit thicker than I was expecting, but then again, it's like a 60s guitar, so you'd expect it to be... I like good. that neck. You like the neck. That's yeah. good. It does play very nice, like, you can... You can play on it. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the guitars tend to, tend, <laughs> tend to do that. Anyway, uh, that's that's these guitars. Let's go outside, and we'll do, we'll sign off. Well, we actually forgot to do a sign off in store, but I would like to take the opportunity to thank Everest Music for allowing us to record. And I would like to mention that this video isn't sponsored or anything. It's just us doing what we really like to do. Nerd out on guitars and play them. And it's a good opportunity to showcase a retail store because, well, online purchasing is good and it's it's practical for a lot of people. There isn't really a substitute for picking up guitars in store and as you can see in this video, you'll never really know what you might find. There's normally a few gems around, and I think that was showcased well in this video. So thank you for watching, subscribe if you want to see more, and make sure to like the video too. Uh, thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye! I'd love to do the, the seven string square. Okay. Because okay. that's, that's like very unusual. Do we want to follow a pattern and then come back to the seven string square as like a... Honourable mention. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not. Uh, this is an ender. <laughs> it's not an ender, it's a squire. Uh, <laughs> leave that in. <laughs>